देहरादून इंडिया मार्च थर्टी नाइनटीन फोर्टी फाइव वी आर लुकिंग एट अज मैं इट हैज एवरीथिंग वन कुड एस्पायर फॉर बट इट्स गोइंग टू बी अ ट्रेजिक डे फॉर सेठ हानी सत्यवती एंड सेठ राम किशोर their 24 year old daughter munnu is suffering from throat cancer the doctors have given up all hope in its tough times satyavati reads out passages from the upanishads to her daughter September 6, 1949. Four and a half years after Munnu's death, a girl is born to Bhramendranath Sharma and Shanta Shastri at Nasik. The girl is named Mridula. From the time Mridula was 15 months old, she started talking about her home, parents and sister in Dehradun. she would implore her parents to take her to dehradun was little mridula remembering her past life let's hear it from mridula herself but in 1945 i was dying of cancer i had throat and uh, uh, tongue cancer i was taken to tata memorial bombay where they gave me radium treatment and the radium probably became more and they gave up they said now nothing can be done you can take her back home so my family here knew that i'll be dying in a few days i asked for appointment of a uh, swami ji who used to read out upanishad shlokas to me so that i could die in peace i, I asked for swami ji we then? didn't have the tape recorders and all at that time Where were you then? What? No, they brought me back to Dehradun from uh, from Bombay. So my mother said, I mean, they knew that I'll be dying now. So my mother said, "You are going. You must come back." And I couldn't speak up at that time. I did this. So that we, we uh, okay. I no, I did this. I said, "I'll come back." So then she said, "But you must remember too." So I did this. We will see about it. Now I couldn't assure that I would remember, but that was the strong desire I took with me that I have to remember. I have to come back and I have to remember. So I started speaking when I was reborn in 1949, September. Where? Where? Up at 15 months of age, I started talking, which is quite early. Where were you reborn? I was born in Nasik. 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 And to a Brahmin family, I belong to a Gupta family earlier in my last birth. But uh, I started speaking about my my family, my house in Dehradun. I was far away from Dehradun, and I was too young to know about different places. 
my mother asked me because I will only talk of Dehradun. So my mother asked me, met this mother of mine. She said, where were you? You were in Ludhiana, you were in Bombay, you were in Delhi. But I would each time say, no, I was in Dehradun. Please take me to Dehradun. I used to beg each one of them to take me to Dehradun. My cousin, she, she was, I was very close to an older cousin. And I thought she could do anything for me. What was her name? Sushma Didi. So Sushma Didi, you also can't take me there. And it so happened that I came to that alone. My, I lost my father when I was 40 days old. That was in Nasik itself. And for some work, my mother had to come to Delhi because mommy and daddy, they lived in Delhi. And uh, yeah, after that, my, my aunt, my mother's sister, she found a job for her in Nairobi. She called her to Nairobi and my mother came back to Delhi to get the visa done, which was called, uh, which was called something else at that time. And here she met her, uh, her principal, where my mother had studied in Kanya Gurukul Dehradun. She met her principal there and she told her on what business she was here, like to get the papers ready to go to Africa. Her principal said, why don't you come to Dehradun? Because in the absence of that principal, mommy used to act as acting principal of Kanya Gurukul Dehradun. So that I was two and a half years old at that time. And Mami, me and Sushma Didi were there at that time in Delhi when she met her principal. So Mami thought, okay, okay, she keeps up talking about Dehradun, let me go. And she said, 1st July, we are having, uh, the principal said, on 1st July, we are having some uh, uh, function in a new organization, a new educational institution that I have started. So thinking of all that, Mommy, me and Sushma Didi, we came to Dehradun. Over here, 1st June came very, 1st July came very fast. And of course, over here again, I asked everyone, please take me to my koti. Uh, I get you leeches, we get very good leeches in my koti. But where what? I couldn't tell them beyond that where my koti was. Bali do hair, Dela don my hair. This is how I used to tell them. But to my surprise, I saw the car coming in, my previous parents' car. I said, Oh, they call me the car. See, that is my car. And when my mother got down, I said, Oh, they call me the Bhabi. I used to call her Bhabi, my mother, because my Chacha and my bua, they used to call her Bhabi, so he also used to call her Bhabi. Then my sister got down, her two children got down. And after some my mother was, my mother means my Bhabi, was the president of that institution. So after some time, my mom, my mommy asked my sister, have you lost any bua, bua means father's, uh, uh, father's sister? because the sister of the father calls uh, the mother Bhabi. So, she, now, mommy didn't know who died, but uh, my sister knew who died. So she took me aside. She said, baby, do you know me? I said, yes. She said, who am I? I said, you are Chotu. That was a pet name and we used to call her Chotu. Then she said, and who are you? I said, I'm not know. Then, of course, a barrage of uh, questions she kept asking me and I kept rattling them and she was convinced. Our mother, Bhavi, was busy in meetings and Havan and all that. But uh, after she, uh, she finished with all that, my sister said, Bhavi, this is Manu. Bhavi was also an educated woman. She said, how is it possible? Nay, Bhavi, whatever you say, she is Manu. And Bhavi said, yes, I know. The child comes to me each time, like, I would come and I would lie, put my head on her lap <coughs> while she was sitting in the uh, Havan Puja or 
whenever I didn't, she was in the meetings. So I, I would I'd catch her, sari pallu, I would keep playing with her. And then she also said, okay, she has uh, dampened the, uh, the, burning, uh, the burning fire within me. That is, jalti chwala hai shant karti. Okay. Uh, that, that is how she said. And it was a very big thing. There were so many women, all the committee members and the invitees and all. It, it was something unheard of. My sister said, can we take her for one hour to our house? Mommy didn't want. But the women present, lost. present mommy didn't want. Present, present mother. So she, uh, she told me not to go. And she had trained me so well that she said, if I said, ki kudi mujhe dukho ga, to you wouldn't do that. But this time when she said, I didn't listen to her. Because I have been waiting to go to that house. So, um, and my sister promised that within an hour she'll get me back. So I went, but the women, the other women also forced mommy to send me because this was something rare that was happening. I went there, on the way they had to pick up my father, the past birth father. I looked out of the window and I saw my father standing there. I just wanted to go out of the window, Pitaji, Pitaji, Pitaji. Anyway, he sat in the car and he asked my sister, he said, who have you got uh, with you? Who's this child? She told him the story. He said, oh, do you know me also? I am Sethi's servant. I said, Pitaji, you are saint. Why are you calling yourself servant? Then, uh, of course, they, they came up to the house. At the crossroad before the house, they all got down from the car. And they took me, uh, they asked me, Chalo, let's go, go home. I ran, I went into the gate and I ran inside. But there was some, some renovation that had happened. I, I looked at him and I said, oh, not this, not this. I said, chalo, chalo, go in, go in. And I went up and everything was the same. Oh, I, I remember very well. I removed my shoes. I went to my room. I said, open my room. They had locked it. So I, I took my shoes out and I went in and I told them this is this, that is that, that is that. And they said, uh, I mean, I was showing them the things around in my heart. And it was a, a room with two uh, the, uh, the windows, bay windows. So each, each side was allotted to one of the daughters. We were only two of us. And one side was her, my side, I had my book, bookshelves. The other side was her bookshelves. They found a jewelry box I, I found over there. I said, uh, open this. They said, oh, we didn't find the key. We couldn't open it. This was seven years back. So I said, oh, yes, that is in my history book. I opened my cupboard. I took out the history book. I took out the key and I opened the thing and I put the pie jade in my uh, foot, and then took, uh, in my ankle. I said, no, I hid it from my sister. And as soon as I entered my room, I looked at the fan and I said, oh, this drawing room fan you put in, our, in my room. So then the family remembered that seven years ago, that fan was in the drawing room. Like that, when they brought me back home, left me uh, to my mother, they, came, they gave me lots of leeches because I used to tell people that we have beautiful leeches, very tasty leeches in our house. So that was the first day after I met them. And soon, uh, a few days later was my third birthday, which of course these people, they, they called the, uh, the whole lot of known people and they celebrated it in great style. My sister, she sewed the suit that I wore uh, with herself and put Goda on it and made me wear that suit. So now this was something very unusual happening in the small town. 
So people would come, come to see me and my mother couldn't go back because every day something new was unfolding. Then they kept the, a day for people to come and see me if they wanted. They came, they, they would touch my feet, they would put garlands in my hair and I, I had remembered for my family, not for people. A small child, I was too uh, troubled by that. I said, I'm not a Tamasha, why are they doing all this to me? People would touch my feet and say, Devi, Devi, which was uh, not a long thing. Then what, they kept that one day when they said there were about 4,000 people who came to see you. And they, were, they showed me those uh, trees, you know, people who were sitting on the trees and all that. To, take, to have a glimpse. That, that was the first few days. So after that first day, my going to their house and coming back became quite frequent. My sister was highly convinced, my father was highly convinced by whatever I told them hitherto. But my mother took about a month to say yes aloud. Of course, inside of her, she knew. So she showed me various photos, photographs, where I was a little child in last birth as Manu. And, and I said that this is when I was young. Then they showed me, I'm in a sari, and my, my cousin, a young cousin, she's in my lap. They said, oh, this is you, this is you. I said, no, I'm in sari and blouse. This is Shanti Mossi's daughter, baby. Again, confused. With many photos they showed me, that there were group photos, photos where we had, I had acted as Bharat Mata, that photo where, uh, and over there, I had my sister sit, standing on one side, I had my Masi standing on the other side. I, I recognized everyone. I recognized my professor, I recognized the Mali who used to get class every day to my room when I was lying sick, waiting for death. So like that, I, I recognized many, many, many things, things that, that were mind-boggling for them also. I would say something or the other each time. I, we were traveling, uh, we were parked in the car and uh, I said, uh, they bought me a, a stent balloon. So I picked it up and I said, Pitaji, let's sing our uh, favorite song, Chanda Uncha Rahe Hamara. Mm -hmm. so once they bought uh, uh, Mithai from a shop and I said, don't buy it from here. They left, uh, we left a uh, purse over here and he refused to give it to us. Mm -hmm. Like that, there were so many small, small things that there were things that father and daughter knew. No one else knew. I spoke about that also. So these things uh, convinced them more and more and more. People looked at me and they said, oh, no one can teach such a small child. And when my mother said, my bhabi, my last birth mother said yes, then the town folk said, if Satani has said yes, then it has to be true. That is how it was. What was her name, your mo past life mother's name? Uh, she was Satani Satyavati. And father's name? He would say Ram Kishore. Sisters? Sisters? Sister was Anand Bala, but we called her Chotu. And one thing was there that I, I refused to call her Behenji. They forced me to say Behenji because she was much older and her one daughter was two years older than me, another was two years younger than me. But I said, no, she's younger than me, I call her Behen. I, I agreed to that, but no Behenji I will not put for her. And this life mother's name? She is Shanta Shastri. Last life, uh, father's name, this life father's name? This is Brahmendra Nath Sharma. Okay. Uh, any brothers and sisters or you? I uh, no, no, I'm the only okay. child. Yeah, when I came to NKP school, the teacher there, Miss Sadana, she, she had started with me and I did recognize her. So my parents of last birth, and my family this side, they had good relationship. Like my Nana, he used to look at her, or like look at my Bhavi as his daughter. He used to give, whenever daughter is given something, 
He used to give that my Masi from Africa. She sent frocks for my she sent frocks for my sisters, daughters, because she used to send clothes for me always. And uh, like that, it was when my father, my Taji, my Pitaji from last birth died. That time, my Nana Ji of this birth, he sent things, money and whatever sent to Bhabi, just like a father sends to the daughter. These people also went to Nase. They stayed there with us when mommy was not well. And uh, I mean, that was the relationship between the families also. Even today, I am, uh, I am part of my Chacha's family, of my far off relatives also. They meet me as, as one of them, as one of, from the family. That is it. You're talking about the past life. Uh, past life, uh, past life uh, relatives, and uh, it much was written about it. Much research was done uh, uh, on this. Swami Shivananda's ashram we had gone when I was four, five years old, and uh, we got photos from that time. We got photos. Then when I was seven years old again, we had gone there. He put uh, Vishnu Swami Ji, who was later known as who known as the Flying Swami because he had his own helicopter and he used to go wherever he wanted. Swami Shivananji had sent him to uh, to America. So I've got photos with him questioning me and interviewing me and all that. Then that time I had, we had a photo session with uh, Swami Shivanan. He has written about the, my story in one of his books also. Then. I and Mummy and Bhabi, we had gone to Rishikesh in 1961, January. We were in the, on the other side of Ganga and one day we, they planned to go and visit uh, Shivananda Ashram. So we were sitting in the bhajans that were happening there in the morning kirtan. So Amici saw me and he said, Mridula, Mridula, he pointed out, he got me out of the uh, but, I mean, after the bhajan happened, and we had a photo session with both my mothers on two sides, and I am with Swamiji on his lap, uh, like that. Uh, this, this was there. Then uh, Dr. Stevenson came to know about it. Dr. Stevenson is the, was the world authority on reincarnation. He came to meet me in 1977 in Bangalore and before that I don't know from where they got the address and all. He used to write, he used to get information from me. He had a ward in uh, Bangalore who was uh, helping him out, Dr. Satwan Pasricha. She is an authority in, on her own in uh, reincarnation. She's done lots of work in reincarnation. So. Uh, did uh, Dr. Stevenson or Dr. Pasricha, did they report your case? Did oh, they write? Because she used to send, he used to ask her for questions. She used to come and interview, talk, talk about those things and uh, send him. Did they publish that, uh, this report? I, I don't know. Okay. Because it was far done. I, had, I was married, I had children. When I knew, when, when I spoke about it, I was two and a half. I mean, when I met them. I spoke about it when I was 15 days, uh, 15 months old. Oh, there were some interesting things that I said. Yeah. When my Sushma Diti told me, I think in 80s or 90s she told me, I think it was in 90s that she told me, that Amaji, that was my, my nani and her daddy, she was telling stories to children. And she, she said, oh, the moon, you know, there's that old woman sitting in the moon with a charkha. I said, no, I went out. I said, Amaji doesn't know anything. I went out and I picked up stones, I mean, as big as I could. And I said, there's no goody land sitting over there. There, there are stones like this in the moon. They asked me, how do you know? I said, when I uh, flew away, that is when I saw it there. I never used to say I died. I used to say I flew away. So these are some interesting things which I said, my, uh, my mother asked, what happened to you? I said, so I had uh, pain in my legs and someone 
uh, rinse my legs. Then I had pain in my arms. Someone rinsed my arms. Then my I had severe headache, uh, and then I flew away. So his mummy said that I used to make uh, very uh, uh, depressing faces, face when whenever I would speak about it. But when I, I would say flew away, when I said flew away, I was happy about it. Then, she, then I said I went here and I went there, and I don't know how I came to you. So in between, you know, loss of memory. Then. <coughs> Then I went, uh, they, they said, uh, we were lying down under the sky, I and mommy. And I told her, you know, there's, uh, we are under, the, under the sky, so I said, there's day and night in the sky and the moon also, <coughs> in the stars and the moon also. She said, how do you know? I said, when I flew away, I went there. So, <coughs> she said, what else was there? I said there were nice, very nice Bhagwans, they were Devta, uh, like. So we said, oh, you went to Bhag Bhagwan, Bhagwanji. I said, no. I said, I didn't go to Omji. Omji means the Supreme God. But uh, these Pyare Pyare Bhagwan, I must have meant other good souls over there. Then I said, Okay, I, uh, they asked me, she asked me, well, what did you eat there? I said, nothing, I didn't eat anything. She said, uh, were you, you remained hungry? I said, no, I didn't remain hungry. Then she said, uh, what did you wear? I said, I didn't wear anything. So she said, oh, did you remain naked? I looked at myself, I said, no, I didn't remain, I wasn't naked. And she said, where did you live over there? And by this time, I got angry and I said, oh, you're talking like uh, there are uh, uh, the houses like uh, with the bricks and stones. There are no such houses over there. So they inferred that uh, soul doesn't need all these things. Mridula now lives in Bangalore, but her mind often thinks about her life in Dehradun. She has three daughters and a son. She is a very well-read person who is studying the Upanishads and the Gita very seriously. She spends most of her time learning Sanskrit and is doing social work.